So the fourth one, which is not really a bad choice, it's not a bad uh, number. Um, but again, this movie, I it was I would say that this movie, um, it it was good. I probably would rewatch it again, but right now, um, after seeing it twice now, I had to kind of rewatch it to see if there was anything that I missed. And I want to say that this movie is one of the ones that you know it was good. But I feel like it was still kind of separate from the main DCU company. And that movie is going to be Wonder Woman 84. So I know a lot of folks said that the movie is fantastic. And don't get me wrong. The movie is good. Don't like the movie is good. It's just that it um, this is a wonder. Like, again, in my previous video, this is a Wonder Woman who is already got herself out there, but still not have, you know, she hasn't really exposed herself as Wonder Woman, but she's still out there helping people out, doing her duty as, you know, a hero. And um, you also have it to where, I think the one thing that I wish they could have did was they, I wish they kind of just made the sequel kind of in the present day, like after uh, BBS or after Justice League, like they did with the Aquaman movie. I wish they did it like that. Um, having it said in 1984, it's almost as if like, I see that they were trying to keep, like they were trying to have this movie to where it would also explain why Wonder Woman has been, you know, kept herself hidden from the world for so long. Like no one knew about her up until, you know, Lex Luthor pulled an old photo of her and then Bruce had to do some research and find out, you know, you've been, in this, you've been on this world for, for so long, but you kept yourself hidden from society. So, again, you also have, you know, the antagonist, you have uh, Maxwell Lord, which, you know, I I think the person that played Maxwell did an awesome job. It, this movie was more about sending a message than it was giving us an, a comic book movie, because um, it's almost as if like it's trying to show us that there is there's no easy way of doing things in life. There's no there's no shortcuts. There's no. um there's no uh, easier way of doing things because at the end of the day, everything that we do does have a consequence. And if we try to find an easier route, it's only going to make things a lot harder down the road. Um, then, then you have the the, re the resurrection of Steve Trevor. Because um, I know a lot of people were like, how, how is Steve alive even if he had died in the first Wonder Woman movie? And, you know, again, people, I guess it's a comic book movie. You'll, you'll always find a way to bring back certain characters. So... I was wanting to see how they brought him back. Now I did. One thing they did introduce in the movie was they did introduce Wonder Woman's Invisible Jet, which I'm pretty sure a lot of folks will be scratching their heads like, how is that possible? But I'm glad they was able to bring one of those iconic things about Wonder Woman was her invisible jet. Then you also have um, Wonder Woman's ability to fly, which I don't know why she was able to fly in the other movies like uh, BBS or Justice League. But again, We'll probably find that out later on in the future DC movies about, you know, more about her abilities. I also did like the golden Wonder Woman outfit. I did like that. That was the one part. That's probably the one thing in that movie I did like was seeing her in that golden wing armor. And all uh, because that's the same armor that she wore in Kingdom Come. And I like I like that reference that they did with that. Like that was the same armor she wore in the Kingdom Come comic. Um, which I will explain what the Kingdom Come comic is uh, in another video. But again, that's uh, I did like Cheetah. Uh, Kristen Wiggs did a good job playing the character. Um, as far as how she got obtained her powers, it did change it up a little bit versus how she got her powers originally in the comics. I was hoping that she that she would have kept her powers. So that way, maybe possibility we will probably see a Legion of Doom in a future DCEU movie. But you know, again, we'll probably we'll have to wait and see where they go with that direction. But so far, the movie was good. Um, and <laughs> I have to say that um, I was a little bit stoked that this was the fourth one. But again, I, I you know, in, in my other previous videos, I'll explain to you why that it was. But the, again, Wonder Woman 84 is not a bad movie. Is it's, like I said, it's just more about trying to teach you a lesson than trying to give you a you know action movie. I mean, there is some action in it, but morally, from the beginning to the end, it was mainly just trying to teach you a lesson. But then you also have whoa, huh? Forget that. But what you also have is um the post credit scene where you saw uh, a fan favorite character, Linda Carter, Wonder Woman. So there you have it.
So the fifth movie that I would probably watch most multiple times is going to be Aquaman. Now, <laughs> Aquaman, man, Aquaman literally has been a laughing stock for a long time. Like literally, people used to bash about Aquaman's powers because they were seen. They only saw Aquaman as the guy who talked to fish. Like he he even had a seahorse as a partner and was riding around in the ocean. Like that's how bad it was. Like people used to talk so like mad trash about Aquaman to a point where they thought he was a low level hero. Like he was weak. But given after seeing the Aquaman movie, a lot of people's perspective changed. I wasn't one of those people that was bashing Aquaman. I've always thought Aquaman was a powerful character due to the fact that one, he has he has control of sea life underwater. He also has control of water if used with the trident of uh, Poseidon. He's also a king of Atlantis as well, and I believe he's also have he's also shared inheritance to uh, Poseidon himself. I mean, come on, man. I mean. Like, I don't understand how folks would think Aquaman is a bad hero, but again, that's just some people's opinion. But about the movie, the movie was fan was was good. The movie the Aquaman movie was good. I remember I had took a friend of mine to go see this movie, and she um of course she only wanted to see it because of Jason Momoa. I only wanted to go see it because again, I knew about Aquaman. I'm a comic book guy, and I wanted to see where, you know, where this movie was going because this movie took place the moment after Justice League. As you can tell, there were scenes where it talked about it. This, uh, this version of Aquaman is like a rough, a roughness to him. Like he hasn't really made himself known to be like the superhero Aquaman. Like people heard about a guy underwater who been going around uh, stopping submarines and stuff, but he hasn't really made himself Aquaman. Um, he's he's just been around just saving people until it was time for him to take his rightful place on the throne and also take the. Uh, Trident of Atlantis, which is one of the most powerful weapons on the world, because this weapon was able to stab Darkseid in the eye. So that's how powerful it is. Um, you also have characters like uh, William Defoe. Seeing William Defoe, I just keep seeing him as the Green Goblin. But again, he did a fantastic job. You also have um, Mira. Look, I, I know a lot of people have mixed feelings about uh, Amber Heard's character Mira. Like, um, I don't want to get into in get too much into that so i, I want to leave that one out of it but um overall if the movie i see that the movie was going in a good direction the person directed was james wan i, I think he did an awesome job with where he uh the way he wanted to direct this character and far as like trying to find him find his place in the world also understanding that you know he can't run away from his problems that he has to you know take up responsibility i did the one thing i did like about the movie was the introduction of black manta like the black manta suit was fabulous it was slick it was clean i liked it i kind of wish that he was the main villain but i know they're probably saving him for uh, the sequel of aquaman 2 which i hope he will be the main antagonist and also i hope that they keep him around so they can form the legion of doom as well um the, the character the guy that played him did an awesome job as black manta and overall they they did change up a little thing in the movie where uh, Aquaman's mom didn't die. She just happened to survive somewhere in a, another area of the ocean. Um, they are also even talking about doing a, a, a trench movie. Those those creatures that they were fighting when they had to go down the bottom of the ocean. It was attracted by uh, darkness, but they had to use a flare. And, you know, it was a whole millions of them. They were talking about doing a, a HBO uh, show or, yeah, HBO show on the trench, which... Some people are kind of have mixed reviews about it, but again, we'll see where it goes. But so far, I like the Aquaman costume. That right there has to be the most common accurate costume I've seen so far. It's just so slick. It's so clean, and especially with the trident. It really makes uh, Jason Momoa's Aquaman feel like an actual king. And that final battle with him fighting up against his brother, Ocean Master, you can see that the, this Aquaman finally accepted his responsibility, accepted his his role as becoming king of Atlantis and and turn the tide so that way all the uh, lands of all areas of the seven seas can finally band together and not you know fight enough in a war, um, but you let alone you know be in peace and harmony. So this movie Aquaman is a good. I am I'm hoping to see where they go with his sequel. So again, um, that movie it will be on the fifth place. So the fourth movie, the highest, would be Wonder Woman. 
Now, this is the movie that a lot of people have been hoping we would see on the big screen was a Wonder Woman movie. Um, ever since her appearance in Batman vs. Superman, we was expecting we was going to get a Wonder Woman solo movie. And the route that they decided to go with was the uh, origin of her going way back when in 19... <laughs> It, I believe it was like 1917 during the, uh, was it World War One? I? I believe. Yeah, it was World War One. So, yeah. In this movie, th we're dealing with a Wonder Woman who is so, I ain't going to say she was naive. She was just so into what she was told as a child, her beliefs about man being controlled by the gods, especially gods, Air, the god of war, which is Ares. So she believed that Ares was the reason why man's world is being corrupted so far. So she's out on the quest. She meets a guy named Steve Trevor who happens to crash land on Themyscira, the first man to be on the island full of women. And, you know, to them, they are, you know, she. this is her first time seeing a man as well. So she didn't know what men would look like. But knowing that he had that Steve landed on the, on, you know, on Themyscira, this was a way for Steve to show Wonder Woman you know, what's, what's it like outside of that mascara? We got a Wonder Woman who, you know, is so, uh, up to the code of trying to find Ares, a slayer. So that way she could save the world. But, you know, it's not, it's, everything's not always, you know, good. Grass is not always greener because, you know, even when they was able to go on this quest to save certain people, um, that one scene where they was in the trench, like, and one of them just stepped up and was just taking bullets like this here, using her shield to block them. That was a pivotal moment to where, okay, it's time to put, take off the kitty gloves. It's time to show them that I'm here to take down Ares so that way you all won't have to fight no more. And so, you know, Diana was so, so on her mission of trying to stop Ares that Steve was trying to show her that, you know, um, that it may not just be Ares that's really making man go out of control. And, you know, he was trying to say to uh, Diana that, um, that Ares may not be the man that's, you know, doing it. He's maybe just some people in the world are meant to do bad things. And, you know, this is where Wonder Woman starts to see that, you know, everything she was told as a child wasn't true. Because especially when she thought that the, the general was Ares, but when she finally kills him, she realized that it didn't stop the war. It didn't stop the war. She was confused until um, an ally that she knew turned out to be Ares. This whole time, Ares was mostly influenced man to start a war. And so um, here you go in the third act, which a lot of people didn't like. In the third act, you have Wonder Woman fighting off against Ares, which, you know, was like God versus demigoddess. And I, I kind of did like the fight scene. I did like the fight scene. I wish that uh, I wish that Ares uh, would show off more than what he was doing, because I know he's a lot more powerful, but I know they had to dumb him down just a tad bit. But um the pivotal moment of that movie was uh, Steve's sacrifice. Steve having to sacrifice himself in order to stop the uh, stop the bombs from you know detonating on U.S. soil and cause all Americans to get poisoned is almost similar to what Captain America did in his uh, first movie, having to stop Red Skull from you know taking over uh, the United States. So I could see the you know the uh, the. Uh, I can see where they were trying to go with Steve's uh, Steve's sacrifice. And then after that, it's almost as if like Wonder Woman literally had to see past her her uh, her better her better beliefs and what she thought was the cause of man's war and realize that, you know, some like, like Steve said, that not that most men just just want to be bad. Most men just wants to see the world burn. It doesn't take you don't really have to influence someone in order to be a bad person. Some people just start out being bad because they want to do bad things. And so now this is a Wonder Woman that this is the this is the start of Wonder Woman um being closed off to society because now that she done lost her love Steve Trevor, um it's a big change for her because she was the first person to introduce her to this world and the first person she fell in love with. So losing all of that does do a change on a character. This is why we saw Wonder Woman in a different perspective in BBS and in Justice League. So, but the movie was good. I did like the fight scenes. I did like her introduction. I did like the setting that they were going with, even though I wish they kind of took it in the present day. But, you know, again, it's still a good movie. And I hope to see more of Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman.